Lev Vygotsky was an early 20th century developmental psychologist who developed a sociocultural theory of child development designed to account for the influence of culture on a child's growth and development. Lev Vygotsky was born into an art and literature loving family in what we now Belarus on November 17, 1896 and he was raised in Gomel. Vygotsky began studying at the University of Moscow in 1913, though his course options were severely restricted because he was Jewish. Vygotsky elected to study law and he graduated in 1917. Back in Gomel, Vygotsky taught logic and psychology at a local college. In 1924, he bowed the Second All-Union Congress on psychoneurology with his speech. And he was subsequently invited to join the Moscow Institute of Experimental Psychology. At the institute, Vygotsky served as teacher and researcher for nine years. Vygotsky was an innovative psychologist who made significant advancement in the field of child development. Vygotsky's short career focus on child development, developmental psychology, and educational philosophy. Vygotsky completed 270 scientific articles, numerous lectures, and 10 books based on a wide range of Marxist-based psychological and teaching theories. He died on June 10, 1934 at the young age of 37 after a long battle with TB. It mentioned earlier that Vygotsky worked this theory around the same time of Jan Piaget. That if you will remember, he was part of our recent videos that we talk about cognitive development. Pero ano nga ba ang different views of Jan Piaget's cognitive development to Vygotsky's sociocultural theory? First, in Jan Piaget's theory, it's more individual in focus. He believed that there are universal stages of cognitive development, and it did not give much emphasis on language. And for Vygotsky's theory, it is more social in focus, and he did not propose stages but emphasize on cultural factors in cognitive development, and especially stress the role of language in cognitive development. Vygotsky's experiences together with his interest in literature and his work as a teacher, it led him to recognize the social interaction and language as a two central factors in humans' cognitive development that became known as social-cultural theory of development. So, paano nga ba naisip ni Vygotsky na ang social interactions and language are one of the factors of cognitive development? Just like what it mentioned earlier, Vygotsky's theory focuses more on social, socializing with others. Because for Vygotsky, social environment takes on a major role in one's development. For example, if I will ask all of you now of how will you facilitate your learning, maybe some of us will answer through self-studying, watching online tutorial, or maybe through collaborating, interacting, and socializing with our friends, parents, teachers, and other adults. As you know, Vygotsky emphasizes that effective learning happens through participation in social activities and making the social context very crucial. Social interaction is indeed one of the factors of one's development. But Vygotsky also mentioned that cultural factors played a crucial role on the cognitive development of the child. We all know that culture is shaped over time as a result of specific events. Vygotsky explained that culture consistently affects cognitive development by affecting human behavior. 
he wanted others to realize that there is a complex relationship between culture and human development. It is a cycle at the same time that the culture is influencing an individual and that individual is in turn creating culture. And not just the culture, but also the language that a child used to hear since they were born. Alam naman natin na language is one of the reasons why we acquire knowledge that others already have. Kaya nga nabanggit sa unang factor yung social interactions kasi we learn through socializing with other people. And uh, we socialize through the use of language. But language isn't just to serve for social functions. It also used for individual functions. It helps the learner regulate and reflect his own thinking. For example, alam ko na some of us used to talk with ourselves with a simple saying, kakayanin natin to. Hindi pwede ang sumuko. Marami tayong pangarap sa buhay. Right? <laughs> okay, for Vygotsky, this eventually led to private speech, which is a form of self-talk that guides a person's thinking and action. And that's why Bigotsky believed that children learn best through hands-on activities rather than listening passively. And this will be more meaningful and fruitful if we will interact with knowledgeable adults and peers. Highlighting the process interacting with knowledgeable adults and peers, Bigotsky proposed the zone of proximal development wherein it differentiates the gap between what a student can do independently and what they can potentially do with the help of a more knowledgeable other. In order for children to advance their learning even further, they must engage in social interaction with a more knowledgeable others. These more knowledgeable others, like parents and teachers, introduce children to the tools and skills of their culture such as writing, math, and science. Furthermore, in the zone of proximal development, the learner is close to develop the new skill or knowledge, but they need assistance and encouragement. Halimbawa, imagine natin na a student has just mastered basic addition. At this point, Basic subtraction may enter their zone of proximal development, meaning that they have the ability to learn subtraction and will likely be able to master it with guidance and support. If learning is taking place in the zone of proximal development, only a small amount of assistance will be required. But please remember that if too much assistance is given, the child may learn only to parrot the teacher rather than mastering the concept independently. Kaya nga mayroon tayong tinatawag na scaffolding. Dito, ibinibigay yung support ang kailangan ng learner na nag attempt matuto with something new in the zone of proximal development. That support might include tools, hands-on activities, or direct instructions na magagamit sa mas madaling pagkatuto ng bata. When the student first begins to learn the new concept, the teacher will offer a great deal of support. Over time, kapag napuli master na ni learner yung new skill, then the teacher's support is removed once the skill or concept has been learned. Same for instance is yung pagsasanay nating matuto na makapag-bike. At first, kailangan muna natin ng suporta ng training wheels para ma-ensure na tuwid at may balance nating mapapaandar yung bike. Next, the training wheels will come off and a parent or other adult may run alongside the bicycle, helping the child to steer and balance. And finally, the adult will step aside once can ride independently. In classroom setting, zone of proximal development is a useful concept for teachers to ensure that students are learning in their zone of proximal development, teachers must provide new opportunities for students to work slightly beyond their current skills and provide ongoing scaffolded support to all students. But remember, the teacher continues to offer assistance as needed, but reduce the amount of support they provide over time. And that's all. We hope you learned something in today's video. Thank you for watching.